Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to rehab items. I love to take pre-loved thrift store secondhand finds and make them over and share the process with you all of my vision and my inspiration for doing these. So in today's video, we're kind of on the spring trend here. So let me take a gander at my stash pile and see what I have to make over for you all. Well, isn't he a hoot? So this is an unfinished planter. Oh, and yep, it is double-sided. It's a little bit on the dirty side, but it's unfinished. So I have a blank palette to work with. A little bit easier to blow the dust and debris out before wiping out the inside with the, with the air compressor. That way I'm not getting it trapped in those little feet inside. Other than wiping out the inside, I'm not going to do a lot of wiping on the outside since it's unfinished and it'll just absorb my water in. I doesn't love to get started with a blank canvas. So I am going to go ahead and paint this with Fusion's Heirloom Blue. Oh my gosh, this is a beautiful blue color. I'd like to patina this owl. So this is going to be my base color. <gasps> is it not gorgeous? It's just a deep, almost a robin's egg blue. So even though that this is unfinished, Fusion Paint has primer, paint, and top coat all in one. And you can see how well the coverage is going. I think I'm only going to need one coat. This little owl does have a ton of detail, so I don't want to miss a spot. So this brush is really helping out. It doesn't kick. It doesn't hold a ton of paint, so you don't have all this paint dripping and squishing out, but it also is small enough and has the side tips that I find are really helpful when it comes into getting into detailed areas like these. this is ceramic, Dixie Bell's patinas are perfect to give it that worn age look, almost that it was metal, sitting out in the weather. That's why I picked the hair heirloom color because of the blue color. So I'm hoping to match up my patinas to that. So I'm starting off with the Dixie Bell's iron paint. So the iron paint and the patina sprays mixed together to make the patina. So you can't just paint on the heirloom paint and then just use one of the sprays on top and think that you're going to get this aged look. It's the paint, the Dixie Bells paint and the sprays that work together. I had a couple questions about that so I thought I would touch on it right now. So I'm just kind of just randomly doing a dabbing motion kind of like rain would run down, water would run down on this cute little owl. Is it going to take me a little bit of time, a little bit of thought? Yeah, but that's the fun of crafting. It's that artistry of just kind of trying to envision what the finished look is going to look like. And then I'll just keep working on it. I'm just trying to figure out where water would pool up, where it would hit, and then kind of blending it down so I just I don't just have this huge area of painted surface. Then you can see that I'm doing a dabbing motion, not a paintbrush stroke. I'm doing a dabbing motion. I feel like patinas, rust, and that kind of stuff are raised and bumpy, so that's why I choose to do the dabbing motion with the paint. Here's the patina I was talking about. It is the blue patina spray by Dixie Bell. It goes along with their paint. Now, I'm hoping for some turquoise color. I don't necessarily want the whole thing to be turquoise in color because I don't want it to match that heirloom paint completely. But I'm going to go ahead and mist this on first. Then I like the variation of color, so I'm going to go ahead and mist the green patina spray right on top of that turquoise. Now, my paint is wet. My sprays are wet. And then you're going to just let it sit off to the side and do what it does and have that chemical reaction. I'm not worried about the overspray in the inside because I'll be able to wipe it out. Wow, all I have to say is wow, <laughs> wow, is that not amazing? But I wanted more turquoise. 
so I don't really see enough feathers. So what I'm going to share with you now, if you don't get the results that you're necessarily looking for, how you can critique it just a little bit, how you can change it here and there. So I'm using the gilding wax in the patina that has that turquoisey color that I was looking for. I'm just using a stencil brush and I'm just brushing it on so that you can see those individual feathers a little bit more. Yes, even though you after you did the patinas, if you don't necessarily like it, there is a way to tweak it here and there. Once I'm happy with it, now I can take it and I'm going to use some Weather Defense Clear Coat to seal it in. As a reseller, I definitely think that this would just sell on its own, but my final vision was to fill this up with some beautiful florals. So I'm filling it up first with some Dollar Tree floral foam. And then to cover up that floral foam, I'm just using a little bit of the Spanish moss. Man, I do love using this stuff, but <laughs> it's a little bit on the messy side. So for my flowers, I'm keeping it neutral. This, it turned out beautiful. I'm so happy with how it turned out. And I love the beige baby's breath from Hobby Lobby, especially when you can get it at the 40% off sale. Look, it doesn't take away anything from how we painted that patina or the heirloom color. It just, it kind of, it's the topper. It finishes it right off. purchase that owl I also purchased this little owl and to me he's probably like a light holder he opens up and same thing unfinished blank canvas so not going to quite paint him exactly the same I thought it's fun to have fun with colors and then just check out the reactions like I said this is the first time I've actually painted and then added patina over it so it's new to me and I'm just testing it out so I'm doing upper Canada do you not love this fun green but there again it reminds me of something that would be outdoors it's something that would if it if it was metal it would patina with the weather but as we know these aren't metal but with Dixie Bell patinas, you can make anything patinaed and look like it may be metal. Have people second guessing. So there again, I'm going to start off with the Dixie Belle iron paint. Now, Dixie Belle does have copper and bronze, and it might have turquoise better the first one. But I don't know. I, I'm i really geared towards always using the iron paint. Y'all, if you want to test them out, go ahead. I did, um, when I first started using these, tried out the bronze and the copper, and I just really like the chemical reaction visually to me when I use the iron paint. The 
the one thing you will notice is how the patina sprays then run down. So what didn't look like it was covered is definitely covered now. But I'm not going to use the blue patina on there. I'm going to go ahead and use this one, African Bronze. So to me, it does kind of have that bronzy type of look to it, especially with the green underlying paint. But there again, I want to break up the really heavy rust patina going on and give it a little bit more definition in the feathers. Look at how beautiful that gold, that African bronze is. Uh, oh, the yeah, you need these in your arsenal if you're going to be doing any type of patina and you're still, like me, new with it <laughs> and you want to, I don't know if I'm necessarily new, but this technique today is new of mixing paint and then putting the patina on and not covering the entire thing with the patina paints. Once I brought out those details, now I'm just going to go ahead and get it all sealed in. And then of course, I'm going to add some fairy lights to this to shine through those holes. <music> So have you ever seen a watering can that is actually a planter? So I collect watering cans, so I'm always geared towards picking them up. And I thought this is just a neat idea. Yes, it has holes in the inside and it actually has holes on the bottom. So then it has your proper drainage for being able to put a plant in there. So though I need to get the sticker that would ne had never come off <laughs> why it was being used to come off because we are going to actually paint this. So I'm just using a little bit of lemon oil to help release that sticky, eat away some of the sticky that I should be able to start getting it. There's a, just a little bit of the label left, but it's enough that you would definitely see it if you painted over it. So after wiping the lemon oil off, now I'm going to proceed on using some 220 sandpaper just to scuff sand a little bit on the outside of this. Now, if I didn't scuff sand it, I might want to use a shellac to spray it or some type of primer, primer to help the paint stick onto this metal. Then I'll give it a good cleaning of Dawn dish soap and hot water just to make sure that there's not any of that lemon oil residue left behind that will prevent my paint from sticky or any of the other stuff. Now it, it has been used, it is rusty crusty in the inside, but I'm just getting it cleaned out right now. Go ahead and use some Weather Defense Metal Spray, a couple coats in the inside and on the bottom where it has rusted and that should seal it in and prevent it from going any further. So I thought it would be fun to have some fun with green on this watering can. So I'm going to just use straight basil. It's a nice, dark, rich green. So I'm using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint, which is a powder paint that you mix with water. So it's equal parts powder to equal parts water. You stir it together for two minutes, and then you sit it off to the side and let it thicken up about two to ten minutes. Now I think for this watering can, I'm going to go ahead and paint the entire can, including the spout and both of the handles. I really think that this pop of green is just going to be amazing on this candle. Now I'm using one of the Stale Masters brushes. I'm not even sure if I said that right, but they're my go-to brushes. And I just recently bought the smaller size one and I am loving it because I knew on this piece I was going to have a lot of detailed areas I was going to have to get into. I just like that there's not a lot of bristles on it, but it holds the paint properly. I don't have so much paint on my brush or my brush isn't so big that I just, I don't know what to do with it. And I just caused myself a hot mess by having so many drips and runs and brush marks. But the bristles are soft. They clean up really easy. Just some Dawn dish soap and some hot water. I do use the Fusions brush cleaner to condition my brushes. Probably because of the hairdresser in me, I always take care of my investment. And paint brushes are definitely an investment.
See how well with the scuff sanding, the proper prep, a good paintbrush, it's on there. You don't have all these drips and runs that you're worrying about. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And now when I go to my second coat, the second coat is really going to grab onto that first coat. You'll really see the coverage coming up now. By all means, y'all, you do not have to use everything that I use. I am just showing you an idea of items to make over. Though my paint choice and my brush choice, y'all, I started at Walmart too. And that, I tell you, I did a wonderful job using those things too. But as we progress in our time of doing items, we can tell the difference in quality of products. You can tell this paint is on there. There's maybe some areas here and there that it did not attach to, which will give it that old timey look is why I love milk paint because I love the thought of it being old timey. And yes, you see me. What the heck, Yvonne? What are you doing? So yes, I'm using Jolie's Black Wax on the detailed areas. And I know it looks a little extreme, like what am I doing painting stripes on this? I'm not, I'm waxing it. You need to seal your milk paint in and I'm choosing to pop my details areas, give them some dark black wax to sit as like little shadows where dirt has built up. And then as you see, I'm rubbing in Homestead's clear wax and blending it all together. And between the black wax and the clear wax, it's just really going to pop the true color of this basil. Oh, my heart is happy seeing this. I know it's, those. sometimes that process is way scary, but sometimes scary is a good thing if your results are what you were looking for. As I was waxing the sprinkler head, you can tell that the wax kind of build up in the hole. So I'm just taking the picking tool from the Dollar Tree store or from your Cricut if you have a Cricut and picking that out so it's nice and clean. Now, not everybody would be excited about a painted watering can that has a rusty inside or why it is built the way that it is. So I'm taking one of my terracotta pots. I cannot believe I'm giving away or going to be reselling one of my terracotta pots. If you watch my social media or my other channel, the Journey channel, 
you know that not only do I collect watering cans, but I collect terracotta pots. I have this most amazing cubby that I display them in. Y'all have to check out that channel and see if you can find <laughs> where I show those displays. So yes, I'm going to go ahead and fill this up with some florals, some Dollar Tree floral foam, some Spanish moss, but I'm going to put some tulips in this one because I just think it is the season right now for tulips coming on here in Michigan anyway. And I think these are some of the most realistic fake tulips I've found. And I always found them in other people's booths at antique malls. I know I need to like look for some next year for wholesale, but really they were very cost efficient to buy out of somebody's booth but I absolutely thought they were gorgeous I thought they were realistic I love that they were different sizes but the stems are a little bit rubberly there is some wire in there so you kind of have to kind of make the hole in the foam to get it to stay upright <laughs> So if you don't have a watering can like that, do you have one of these new aged galvanized buckets laying around? Or have you seen them in a thrift store? Or will you be looking for them in a thrift store? So yep, new age, super shiny, super bright. I'm going to go ahead and get this guff sanded. And though I said that it was new age, I didn't mean that it was new. It's newly thrifted, but it does need to be cleaned off. So on dish soap, hot water. And then for this one, I'm going to do Birdie, which Birdie is a wonderful, probably Robin's egg blue color. Oh, I do like this color just as much as I like that hair, heirloom color by Fusion. Oh, two fun colors, two different products, but two fun colors. So same thing, dry powder, equal parts powder, water, mix it for two minutes, sit it off to the side and let it thicken up. I know you can't really get the true color until you get that second coat. That first coat sometimes just does not look like it took. But once you start adding that second coat and that first coat is grabbing onto the second coat, look how amazing this color is. Now, there is a difference when it comes to milk paint, what you're putting it on, especially, you know, metals. Even the two types of metals I'm doing here today are going to react differently to this milk paint. And here's what I mean. So the first one didn't hardly have any chipping whatsoever, but this one, look at all that chipping. But I'm not done with it yet, so I don't want that to chip off while I'm working on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and seal it in with some of the Weather Defense Clear Coat Metal Spray. I am going to add a transfer. I have some transfers left over. I use the Collage de Fleurs 
on a furniture piece and I just happened to have some of the flowers left. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to use one of them. <gasps> Look at these I, peonies. Do you think they're peony? I don't know. I am not a master gardener. I don't know. I just know that they're pretty flowers and I thought that color would look amazing with the birdie color. So if you have not used IOD's transfers, the one side is sticky. So where I just stuck it, that is sticky. So now I need to release it from the grid paper, which is like a hard plastic paper um, that's bendable. So what you do is you start doing a little, like a little rubbing tool. And I just happen to have a wooden spool because I don't know where my rubbing tool. But it does come with a rubbing tool when you, when you buy the transfers. But this works also. So I'm just trying to release that image from the hard plastic grid paper. So once you start getting it to release, the paper will start, the image itself will start to turn chalky. That way you know that you it's released and it's on your item and then you can start lifting your, your plastic paper off. <music> purposely offset the flower because I wanted to add the word flower. So this is one of the funky junk stencils. I just love the thought of overlaying and then this being a little garden caddy to take back and forth when you're out in your garden. Now I didn't say this was the easiest thing <laughs> to do. I've got a round object so I have Tracy's contraption underneath holding my round object from rolling. I'm using a paper <laughs> clip, a binders clip to hold the stencil in place and then I'm very gingerly putting my hands trying to push the stencil down for each letter so that I'm not making it a hot mess and I'm using Color Fusion's Coal Black as my stencil color and yes I am overlaying the word right on top of the flower and then just doing a dry dabbing technique using a spin makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree store. The things we crafters do. <music> transfer on I have my wording on now I can go back and chip because I knew where it had raised it it was going to want to chip off so I might as well just take some 220 sandpaper and chip it off myself and then I'll just go ahead and go back in and seal this back in with some of the homestead clear wax remember this tub is a special order through the painted heirloom so you'll have to email Vonda if you're interested in it So thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think? I know those owls trying to, trying to overlap paint and patina, that's new. I thought I need to take my game to the next level. So adding paint and patina at the same time, hey, I'll tweak it, I'll get it, I'll get it going there along with having some of the gilding waxes to kind of tone it down. If you don't get that perfect look when you want with the patinas, these are wonderful to help you along and achieve a look that you might be going for a little bit more. So as always, let me know which of the items I made over today were your favorites and if I have inspired you to look at secondhand finds in a new way. So again, thanks for watching today's video. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out the channel for the first time, 
and you love pre-loved items and you want to find inspiration of what to do with them, not only to add them into your own home decor, to make them over, give them new life. Don't forget I have a second channel called Ginger Chick The Journey where I show how I add these into my own home decor and me going thrifting with my husband Chris to find these treasures. So again, and if you're not part of the YouTube family, hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye.